We continue looking back now at TV's classic cops, your favorite police shows from past decades. And this morning, we are thrilled to bring you The Andy Griffith Show. The small town of Mayberry, North Carolina, was the setting for a homespun comedy, which aired for eight years, beginning in 1960. Sheriff Andy Taylor was a widower with a young son named Opie. They lived with Andy's Aunt B, while Barney Fife served as the, I guess I can say it, inept deputy sheriff. The show charmed the nation with stories of love, hope, and decency in a small town. And once in a while, they even did some police work. Town smart, Alex. I'm throwing the book at it. Overtime parking, causing a nuisance, but no driver's license. Bank robbery. Bank robbery, no registration certificate. Just an arrest. Bank robbery. <laughs> Andy Griffith, Don Knotts, great to have you here on today. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you believe, Andy, this was 36 years ago that this first started? Yes, yes, and it's never been off the air since. When you look back at the show, one thing that's very obvious is this is a time that in many places around this country has gone by, and life was not, in that small town, is not the way it is today. Tell me about Mayberry. What was it like? Well, though we never said it, and though it was shot in the 60s, it had a feeling of the 30s. Uh, it, it, was, it was when we were doing it of a time gone by. And we were very careful to keep our characters always very pure. If a joke made a lie out of the character, we'd lose the joke. Yeah, Andy used to say, if it sounds like a joke, throw it out. You two were cops, obviously, but very few major crimes ever really took place in Mayberry. Did they? No. No, they didn't. <laughs> no, no. You'd have uh, some stills that had to be broken up, and you had some, uh, uh, some bank capers and a few things like that, but uh, nobody got killed. As a matter of fact, you didn't even carry a gun, did you? The real reason I didn't wear one is I didn't want that weight on my hip. I didn't know that. You didn't? No. Hmm. You did carry a gun, though. <laughs> yeah. But... Well, we had a joke for his gun. <laughs> yeah. You only had one bullet. One bullet. Hey, so let me show you what a bullet I look like. <laughs> now, there's bullet maintenance. <laughs> oh, Barney, that's beautiful. <laughs> I've heard about your bullet, Barney. <laughs> did you ever get a chance to even come close to using that bullet? Oh, a few times. We use it usually to shoot myself in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, I'm going to ask you to describe your own characters in a second, but let's start with you describing each other's characters. Tell me about Andy. Well, Andy Taylor was a stalwart. He was dependable, and, uh, and Barney depended on him a great deal, although he'd never, he never owned up to it. Tell me about Barney. Barney could do anything. We had, that, uh, we had that show called Barney and the Choir. And Barney sang <clears throat> off key, though he didn't know it. And we tried to find other places to rehearse so he wouldn't be there and he'd show up. Mm -hmm. And so finally I said, make him the soloist. And, he, and then I talked him into speaking his, his solo. Swiftly to nature, new vigor, bestowing And he, he said, Oh, it's no use, Andy. Can you tell a bird to talk? Can you tell a bird to just go chirp, chirp, chirp? No, Andy, I'm like a bird. I was born to sing. And so finally, I, I talked him into believing that the microphone was so, so hot. That so sensitive. Just, so sensitive. He didn't need to hardly make any sound at all. Finally, no sound. <laughs> and when it came time for his solo, we put a man behind a curtain with a microphone. And when Barney heard that voice, he became Frank Sinatra. <laughs> it was wonderful. Being the straight man, I got to be in the show, and I had the best seat in the house at the same time. I played straight to all these fine comedic characters that we had, and I loved it. You won, I think, Don, something like five Emmys? You did. For yeah. this show? Five. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised at how well this show took off, how successful it became? Oh, I think we all were, really. Uh, I think when we first started out, we were just hoping we'd stay on the air. <laughs> we had a gaffer, Frank. I never knew Frank. I didn't remember Frank's last name. He wore a felt hat. Didn't speak to me for the first six weeks. And I ran into him in the men's room one day, and 
he said, you'll be in the top ten in six months. That was his prediction. And we were. So you knew you had some good going. We were never out of the top ten then. Don, you have played some, some incredible characters. Mr. Chicken, Mr. <laughs> Limpet. It is, is Barney still the character that most people walk up to you on the street and say, Barney Fife? Oh, yes. Yes. <clears throat> I hear about Barney more than any, any of the characters. And you're singing. Yes, I made a, 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 an album of hymns uh, last summer, and it's selling on television now, and uh, it's sold between three and 400000 So now here I'm 69, and I get to make this record. The jokes you wrote and the jokes you, you brought us all made me laugh throughout my entire childhood. For, for that, I thank both of you, and thanks for a lot of great trips to the fishing hole. Thank you. Thank you, Don, not thank you Matt. We'll be back in a moment, but first, this is Today on NBC.